Hey guys, Chad with Snoopy.com. Once again, we're going to be doing part two of the quitting smoking video. Uh, we got a lot of positive feedback of the one we put up last night, and uh, some people had some questions, and uh, a little bit about some of the uh, triggers, as they're called, that a lot of times will make you want to smoke, not just because you're addicted to nicotine or to smoking, but there are certain times and certain situations where naturally your body would tell you that you want to smoke, or that you would just habitually do it without even thinking about it just light up a cigarette and move from there so there are certain times where your body is going to tell you that you want to smoke and there are ways that you can deal with that and adjust if you're going to be quitting smoking with snus uh, there's a way that you can replace the uh, times where you're habitually inclined to have a cigarette so you know we'll talk a little bit about some of those ways today some of those situations you may find yourself in where you want to smoke but ways that you can use a snooze at the same time and still uh, embrace that time where you would not normally enjoy nicotine, but you would enjoy snooze in the same way. So let's get into those and we'll talk a little bit about how you can work with some of those situations. Okay, so one of those triggers naturally is going to be being outside because most of the time, unless you're in a bar, and that's not every bar, there's some uh, cities that have statewide, uh, citywide smoking bans. So naturally you're going to associate being outside uh, backyard barbecues, summertime, a lot of things that involve being outside with smoking. You can replace all those habits with snooze. It's just going to take a little time. One of my favorite things in the summer was always to go outside and have a cold beer and a cigarette. As, uh, as I quit smoking, I learned to adjust those habits to include snooze so that I could still enjoy the things that I do but also associate them with snooze. So now I can go outside, and if it's a beautiful, you know, summer day like it is right now, I can pop a snooze in, enjoy a cold beer, and hang out outside. Say I'm at work, and I want to go outside and have a cigarette. Instead of thinking of it as a smoke break, think of it as a snooze break. A lot of times it's just the social aspect. So if you want to go outside with your friends that are smoking, uh, go outside, but have a snooze instead of a cigarette. And you can hang out and be, you know, do everything that you used to do. In the morning, gotta love Arkansas. In the morning or at night before you go to bed, you always used to have that cigarette, or it used to be the first thing you would do in the morning. Instead, just have a snooze. As soon as you wake up, pop a snooze in before you go to bed. Have a snooze right before you go to sleep. If you went outside before you, uh, before you went to bed and smoked, just take a snooze outside with you. Sit out, enjoy the weather, and have a snooze. So all the things that you used to do outside with cigarettes, instead of having a smoke, have a snooze. Your body will adjust and you'll get used to it, and you'll get to enjoy all the health benefits of switching to snooze, getting off of cigarettes, but you can also still enjoy all those times that you habitually smoked, but instead you just use snooze where you used to smoke. So even in this beautiful summer weather, you can still have a beer, just have a snooze instead. And one of the great things about this is that especially with beer and other beverages that involve alcohol, you'll learn to associate if you're of legal age, not implying or, you know, suggesting underage drinking. But if you're of legal age, one of the things you'll learn is that with certain beers, certain alcohols, wines, mixed drinks, there are certain snooses that pair with those drinks. And taking the time to experiment and see what snooze peer, pairs best with what drink is actually a fun little activity you can do whenever you switch. So you can use that to help you in the transition as well. But that's, uh, whenever you're outside, whenever you would smoke, just have a snooze instead. And your body will get used to doing something differently at those times that you would ordinarily smoke. Instead of a smoke break at work, think of it as a snooze break. Okay, so a lot of you, whenever you uh, are smokers, you smoke inside. I, as a former smoker, I didn't smoke inside. I think I did at one of my houses, but not at my house now because it's a newer place. I got new furniture. My daughter lives with me. And I, I didn't want her to be around that and I, I didn't want my house to smell bad. So whenever you quit smoking and you switch to snooze, one of the good benefits is that your house won't have that smell, your clothes are not gonna stink, you won't expose anyone in your household to secondhand smoking, and you won't have to constantly be going outside to have a smoke break. I know that was always annoying when I was watching a movie. If I was ever with a non-smoker and we'd be sitting there watching a movie and 15 minutes later I'd be like, hey, I gotta go smoke that's something that you're going to get rid of because you can sit and watch a movie and not be sitting there waiting for it to die down or waiting for a commercial so that you can go smoke. You can just have a snooze in the whole time and sit and watch your movie or your TV show and just relax. 
that's going to be one of the benefits of not having uh, to smoke. You won't have to be going outside for your smoke breaks. You're not going to have to sit on the couch and sit there and wait for a commercial so that you can go smoke. And not smoking inside, you know, a lot of people do that. When you quit, you're not going to have that smell in your house or on your clothes. That smell is gone. You're not going to have to worry about it anymore. And if you do now and you switch, you can, you can get that smell out of your house. It just takes a little time, some vacuuming, some Febreze. Eventually that smell will go away. I know a lot of people who switched from cigarettes to snooze, and they said, you know, a few weeks later that smell's gone. And, you know, one of the things that you'll pick up, I notice this a lot now that I've quit, is you'll smell people that smoke, and you'll smell them, and you'll be like, wow, did, did I used to smell like that? So one of the good things of knowing that you're going to be quitting smoking is that you're not going to smell like that anymore, and it's not going to be on your clothes. Uh, once you fully quit, I suggest washing everything because your, your nose will start to adjust, and you'll smell it and be like, oh, I need to wash my clothes. You'll get all that smoke smell out eventually. But that's one of the good parts about snooze is you can sit in your house and you can relax and not have to keep going in and out and in and out. You can just have a snooze in and relax and not have to be waiting for a smoke break or constantly going outside, interrupting your movies, interrupting your day. Just keep your snooze in. Usually you can keep them in for up to an hour, hour and a half, sometimes even two hours, and it won't interrupt anything that you're doing. As you can tell by our current scenery, we're in a car. So you can tell what our next uh, topic's going to be about breaking the habit. And this one for me, whenever I quit smoking, was actually the hardest one because whenever I drove, I always associated driving with smoking. I was especially a chain smoker when I was driving. So I had to break that habit. And that was one of the harder ones to do because naturally whenever I got off work and got in the car, I'd want a cigarette. Uh, whenever I was just driving around, I'd want a cigarette, especially in the summer when the weather's nice and you want to roll down the windows. If you have a sunroof, open your sunroof, listen to some good music and have a cigarette. So breaking that habit is one of the harder ones. That's for me especially that was the hardest part but you can switch snooze for cigarettes in that situation you're gonna have to adjust though it just takes a little time uh, for me actually it was a little bit harder than most I was chewing on coffee straws and I had a pen in my hand most of the time because I was used to having something in my hand and I was used to that hand to mouth that you have with cigarettes so that's one of the things that takes a little time is your body adjusting to like I said earlier the times where you would habitually have a cigarette like being outside uh, sitting on the couch watching TV and especially driving, which I know is the hardest part for a lot of people. So now that I've adjusted, it's a year later, you know, I look back and I, I can still do the things that I did before. You know, it's summer right now, it's about 8 o'clock, there's a nice breeze going through, it's about 70 to 75, 80 degrees. Uh, I can roll down the windows, drive, listen to the music, hit the back roads, and just have a snooze in and enjoy it like I would with a cigarette. Because I've changed my association in my mind to the times from the times that I used tobacco. I changed it from having a cigarette, I changed it to having a snooze. So now my body knows that whenever, you know, whenever I'm doing any of the situations I was in before, waking up, going to bed, outside barbecuing, mowing the yard, or just driving, I now use a snooze instead and my body's okay with that. Naturally that's one of those things that uh, it takes time and you'll adjust to it in time, but you know, it's one of those things that you would habitually use cigarettes, it will replace it with snooze. One of the better parts of it is, especially for me, I like to travel, so road trips are a lot more fun now because I'm not constantly chain smoking or getting out and having a cigarette. I can just go for a drive, take, a, take have a long day, and just have a snooze. And especially, you know, if I'm driving, I can have a snooze that'll last a couple of hours, so I can go through five or six portions for an entire day instead of going through two packs of cigarettes, and that pays for itself in time. So like I said with the last parts, we've discussed a lot of the times where we would habitually smoke, it's just about breaking the habit and changing those associations in your mind from times you would have a cigarette to change it to times that you would have a snooze. And, you know, like I said before, be patient. It takes time. If you quit smoking for a few days and you go a few days without a cigarette, you're yawn snooze and you're feeling good about it and you slip and have a cigarette, don't get down about it. Don't feel like you failed or anything because you've broken the habit. You've already taken the most important step and that's to kick the cigarettes. So stay strong. Like we said in the last video, we're always here. If you need us, send an email, send a comment, let us know if you have any questions. And we'll always be there quick to help you out if you need anything. But you can do it. You've taken the first step and you're looking into snooze and you're thinking about quitting. It's helped a lot of people. It can help you too. I want to wish you the best of luck. And, you know, it's, a, it's not the easiest thing in the world for some people, but you've, you've taken that first step. You can break the habit. And I, wish, I want to wish you the best of luck.